Gentlemen of the court, I'd like to present to you something. Our client, Mario, didn't just die. He was murdered. Now, this wouldn't be the first time Nintendo murdered a series, but this was different. It felt targeted, targeted towards us. Mario wasn't just killed because he wasn't making money. He was killed to make money. So let's rewind to when it all began, in 1981. But nobody cared until 1985. This young, handsome Italian man would go out on a quest to save his princess. After overcoming obstacle after obstacle, he would reach her. And little did he know that his story would go on to be told for generations. And little did he know that this would be the beginning of the end. Fast forward to September 3 of 2020. Stylishly late as always, Nintendo broke the Nintendo Direct drought of six months. Or longer if you don't count the Animal Crossing Direct as an actual Direct and uh... Fans' prayers were answered at last. A celebration for Mario's Big 35, and there were a lot of really cool announcements, like a compilation that contained some of the greatest Mario games of all time, that I may or may not regret shilling for. Mario Fortnite! Mario Kart at Home, this cool Game & Watch that I covered a little while back, and a metric ton of promotional events, ranging from sweepstakes to these pins. I wasted one hour and 20 minutes refreshing the page to get these stupid pins. What fans didn't expect was a time limit. Sure, every party's gotta come to an end at some point, but not like this. Yeah, that's right, on March 31, Mario would be sent to the gallows. Not only would the production of the physical stuff stop, but they would stop producing digital versions. Good gravy, even the digital shelves are empty. Oh, also, Fire Emblem got wrapped up into this. You know, they had a physical release, but uh, <laughs> it's not an actual physical release. You know, what do I do with this stupid piece of paper? This whole thing just screams anti-consumer behavior. While I do understand the limiting of physical releases, after all, that is the whole idea behind um, special editions. Limiting digital stuff just doesn't make sense. They're even killing Mario Battle Royale! This was supposed to be a celebration of Mario, but it really just feels like reading his eulogy. You know what's funny, people demanded for Scott Pilgrim to be re-released, and that got taken down for legal reasons, but now we have a company taking down their own first party game in order to make people fear losing it. Okay, that's enough anger, so uh, let's move on to bargaining. Please don't remove this game, Nintendo. Ah! I am now depressed. So let's do some reminiscing on this red birthday party. Absolutely, the biggest game to come out was Super Mario 3D All-Stars. And uh, as a much uglier, younger, and less wise version of me once said, Inside this concise package, we have three of the most revolutionary platformers. And honestly, I can still say that I stand by that. Now, while this is a great set of games, it was also very lazy. Oh, come on, you didn't even try. That's gonna be a yikes from me. Well, I do respect this package in the sense that it brings some of the greatest Mario games to the Switch. Mario 64 with upscaled assets, neat, but it's stuck in four by three. Super Mario Sunshine in widescreen, awesome. But the camera controls sucked until a later update. And Mario Galaxy with button controls. But you still need to use motion controls to navigate through the menu. You cannot be serious, you know, you can't make this stuff up. Who even made this? Oh yeah, these guys. Let's move on to something that was a lot smaller. I have a perfectly fine review for this that I don't need to atone for, so let's keep it brief. This is honestly a highlight for the anniversary. The Mario Game & Watch is just such a classy, clean, and all-around genius way to play the original Mario Brothers. I mean, look, you take one of Nintendo's oldest video game consoles, and then you mix it with one of Nintendo's most successful characters, and you mash it together. It's simple, but it's a genius. But after the 31st, you're not gonna be able to play it! Sweet! And after this, we have Mario Fortnite, made by the delightful people behind Tetris 99. You take on 34 other Marios in a Battle Royale competition. I've played this game two times, and I will never play it again. Sure, that sounds bad, but that doesn't mean you have to go and kill it. It was a solid game, and I mean, come on, this just screams untapped potential. I'm sure with a little love and time, it could have become something great. Emphasis on could have. Look, if you'll allow me just to get a little pessimistic, this whole thing just really disappoints me. The whole purpose of Mario's 35th birthday was supposed to be super fun, and in a lot of ways it was but there's just a nasty corporate undertone to everything. At the end of the day, it really felt like a marketing stunt, and it totally was one, and it totally paid off. That just goes against the spirit of what Nintendo is to me. 
Well, getting money will always be a company's bottom line, and Nintendo has certainly been no stranger to greed. It just felt wrong. But you know what? It is what it is, and I accept that. Let's see what time it is. Oh, <laughs> wow, that is... It is not March anymore. <laughs>